Welcome to the lab portion of the Embedded Packet Capture, or EPC, lesson. Here's the topology that we'll be using for this lab. Mm, kinda. The IP address ranges are going to be a little bit different. I initially recorded this with real equipment. I had a 2811 and some 3750s, but the recording didn't turn out that well because the fan noise was pretty loud and my voice was pretty low. So I'm going to go ahead and emulate this on Dynamips using GNS3. And I'll show you that topology in just a bit. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. Anyways, what we're doing here is we're trying to emulate a remote site. Looks like a small site here. You've got a switch, you've got a router, and then you have a web server. So this is going to be your internal LAN here. Here's your end user, and this web server is somewhere out on the internet. And what we want to do is we want to capture packets that are going from the end user to this web server. And we're not going to get down to just the specific packets from the end user. We're going to kind of use a saw rather than a scalpel on this one because this is a lab. In production, you'd want to filter the packets that you're capturing so you're only capturing pertinent packets, you know, packets that are, that are going from this end user to this web server on port 80 and back. In this case, we're just going to capture everything that's on FA0 slash 1. I should say the internal LAN Ethernet link in both directions. And here's what we're going to be using in Dynamips. R2 is going to be playing the role of the end user. Switch 1 is a switch, obviously. R1 is where we're going to do our packet capture. And then R3 will be playing the role of the web server. So basically we're going to go on R2 and Telnet on port 80 to R3 and see if we can open that up. And that's going to simulate web traffic going from the end user to the web server. This cloud down here, that's my PC. The reason I have that is because once we get this packet capture, we're going to push it out to a TFTP server. So that's what I've got running on my PC so that we can transfer it to my PC and then open it up in Wireshark. And the only significant difference here is that the IP address range is gonna be different because I was using the 10.1.1 dot zero slash 24 for the cloud and I really didn't want to go in there and mess with that so we're gonna have a little bit different IP range for the internal address but other than that it's pretty much the same topology alright so the devices are up and running R1 is the device that we're gonna do the packet capture on R2 is playing the role of laptop and I've set the host name to reflect that as well as R3 will be playing the role of web server and we could take a look at the interfaces on R1 and you can see this is going to be our connection to the cloud, which is going to be my PC. That's what we'll be using for the TFTP server. This is going to be our internal network address, so that's why it's slightly different. It's 10.1.100 rather than the 10.1.1, because that's being used up here for the cloud. And then our external IP address is going to be the same. So this is going to be the connection you know, to the internet, and that's where we're going to go to get to that web server. Nothing really complex going on here. I've got some default routes set up on the quote-unquote laptop and web server so they can reach each other. So if we're good to go, I should be able to ping 100.1.100 from the laptop and that 100.1.100 address represents the web server and I can do that and I can even make sure that there's nothing filtering my port 80. I should just up arrow do this. And you can see we can open a connection to the port on that web server. So we've got traffic going from the laptop to the web server. So the first thing we want to do when we're setting up an embedded packet capture is we want to go ahead and configure the buffer. And all these commands start with monitor. And what you could do here, you can do a show ver. I'm using Dynamip so it doesn't show the image. And we're actually, I think, emulating a 7206 here. And I'm running 12.4.24 T-Train code. You have to have 12.4.20 or greater. So this should work. The easiest way to figure out if it's going to work or not is to type in monitor. And and then hit question mark and if you see capture well then that means that it will work or it should work if you don't see capture then you might want to upgrade your code all the commands basically start with monitor capture invoke the iOS help here you can see you have two options you have buffer or point and the point is going to be the capture point so let's start out with the buffer we have to set up our buffer and we're going to give it a name I'm just going to call it my buffer and then from here we can set some options so we have our choices here you do want to follow a certain order for this so if you want to set this to a circular buffer rather than a linear buffer uh, linear is the default if you go ahead and set circular then you don't get any other options so you're going to want to set up the size of your buffer at first and the Cisco documentation said that the default was 1 meg and I think it went up to like 100 meg or 10 meg I can't remember but I did this on like I said the 2811 and I'm doing this on a simulated router as well and I got the same thing where I could only set the 
buffer size up to 512k. So this may change depending on code slash platform, but we're gonna go ahead and set this to the maximum, which is 512k. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is probably set this max size, because you don't really need to capture the entire packet, because most of the time when you're doing packet analysis, you're not looking at the complete payload, you're just looking at the header, so the, the quote unquote metadata. So our max size, let's see what they have for a default. The default is 68 bytes. Let's go ahead and just for shits and giggles, 128 so the difference is here size is the size of the buffer expressed in kilobytes and the max size is the maximum amount of each packet that you're going to capture and that is expressed in bytes and so then we have now just our choice between what type of buffer we're going to use linear is a default you don't have to type linear being a little anal here i'll just go ahead and do that i want to use a linear buffer in this case and the difference between those as i said is that a linear buffer you set that once it gets to in our case 512 kilobytes it's going to be full and it will not accept any more packets whereas a circular buffer will continue to overwrite itself so once it hits 512 kilobytes the next packets that it captures are going to overwrite the the first ones in so it's going to basically just keep the freshest packets in there so it will overwrite but if this is a case where you just want the most recent packets this is the way to go so there's really three steps in the setup that's to create the packet capture buffer create the packet capture point and then associate those two so at this point we could do a show monitor i'm just gonna not type out the whole thing because i suck at typing buffer boy i suck at typing and here you have your options you could say all um, or specify my buffer in this case to here you can hit enter it lets you hit enter here but you do want to specify parameters so what we can see here is that we do have a capture buffer set up it's named my buffer it's a linear buffer the maximum size is 524 288 bytes 512 kilobytes basically and then the maximum element size is 128 bytes so that's what we set up what we're looking for here though when you're troubleshooting is you want to check a couple of points right here is the packet so if there's any packets that have been captured this will be non-zero value obviously here's where a lot of people might miss a step you have to associate a capture point so we can see here that there are no capture points associated with that buffer so let's go ahead and create a capture point and associate it so creating a capture point uses pretty much the same type of configuration except instead of buffer we're going to specify point and then you have to choose a couple options here we're going to use IP for IPv4 I believe that's the default I gotta believe that's the default but we do have to specify it here and then we'll need to choose whether we want Ceph or process switch I'm going to choose Ceph and then we need to name it and in this case you know what I'm going to pause real quick here okay I had to jump out just to see what was connected to the internal LAN. I could have did a do show IP interface description or IP int brief here, but I didn't want to wreck my flow with this uh, command. So I'm just going to name it after the interface that we're going to be capturing on. So in this case, FA1 slash 1 is connected to the internal LAN. That's where we want to capture our packets. And then you have some options here. You name it and then you assign an interface. I just think it's funny that you can assign all interfaces. That seems like a really bad idea. But let's go ahead and make this F1 slash 1. And then the final thing that you want to do is specify which direction you want to capture on. In our case, we're going to capture in both directions. So we should be good to go here. So now we can use a similar command to the show monitor cap buffer. It's going to be point. And again, you have the option of specifying the point or just in this case, we'll use all because there's only one capture point configured here. And as you can see here, it shows you what's going on. It gives you the name. And then in two different places, it shows you that you're using IPv4 and Ceph right here for troubleshooting. This is a good thing to look at because again, we have an associated capture point with a buffer if you see none there then you know you need to set that up and I, I do like the fact that both of these commands show you the configuration so you can see what we've inputted so far inactive this will change to active when there's actually a packet capture started so what we need to do now is we need to associate the capture point with the buffer that we created and we're going to use the variation on the monitor capture point command so here you've got a choice to associate or disassociate we're going to associate and I would invoke the help here just so you know which order these go in the first thing you want to do is the capture point which is going to be fa1 under bar one and then the buffer which is my buffer and that's all the options you need 